<laughs> oh no. It's broken. I think that's a sign that maybe I should simplify my videos and stop doing all these unnecessary jump cuts. I don't know why I do it. I really don't. Welcome back to my channel. Apologies for my inconsistent upload schedule. As you know, university is extremely overwhelming and my motivation has been very lacking recently. Thank you for your patience and thank you for watching my video. Same as all my other videos, I put a lot of unnecessary effort into it because I do care and I think adding a little bit of extra spice and flair to it makes it more interesting to watch and hopefully it'll reach a larger audience that way. Now, let's get to the actual assignment on hand. The poem. Decolonize music. Why should we do so? Music is based on Western conceptions. It has nothing to do with the indigenous peoples. <clears throat> Ever heard of the call to action? Teachers are supposed to integrate indigenous knowledge and teaching methods in classrooms. Indigenous peoples have the right to dignity and diversity of their cultures, traditions, histories, and aspirations, which shall be appropriately reflected in education and public information. Indigenous music relationship between songs, stories, and the land that inspires them. Music is a lived experience. Past, present, future. Indigenous peoples have the right. They deserve the right. So, put, put on, on an indigenous lens. lens. We have a responsibility. We must work towards deconstructing, weeding out Western bias, say goodbye to dead white composers, Include indigenous composers instead. Put them on an indigenous lens. Careful preparation, choices. Decenter the score. Decenter yourself. Release control. Expand your musical preparation. Signal your allyship. Put them on an indigenous lens. Students are not, not objects. Rethink participation. Let your assumptions go. Trust in their responsibility. May not look traditional, but let it, it happen. Put on an indigenous lens. lens. Learn, Learn with your students. Share your preparation. Tap into their curiosity. Develop, develop greater awareness. Change internally and externally. Maybe, just maybe, this will lead to activism. Only if we put on an indigenous lens. Thank you so much for listening to my poem. I had a lot of fun putting it together and I hope it worked out and I hope you enjoyed it just as much as I did. And more important part of this assignment is talking about why I chose uh, different aspects of this poem. So, off the top, we have me in the center. I'm the one who says, decolonize music. And I think that's true. But then you have two people coming at me saying, what's the point? These two other people are the uneducated. So in the first half of it, I'm educating them. The two other people come to the realization that indigenous music is important. And the main thing that you hear repeating throughout the poem is put on an indigenous lens. And I think that is the most important thing to do, like they would teach you when you were little. You need to put yourself in other people's shoes. And if you look through the indigenous lens, you can see things from a different way. In the second portion, I talk about taking on a responsibility, and this mainly is to get rid of all the dead white composers and to change the curriculum. That's what that portion of the poem means. In the next part of the poem, it's talking about how you should prepare yourself as a music educator and you need to decenter yourself from it. And I think that's very important because I've come to the realization after reading this article that music is so centered. It's always like, oh, you've got to be exactly like the teacher or else you're not that good. But that's not what music is in the indigenous sense. 
We really need to change that by just letting go. In the next section of the poem, it's talking about how we need to trust in our students and let all these traditional assumptions go. Even though that's what we've been used to, we need to change what we assume about our students. In the last section of the poem, it's essentially just bringing it home and the top points. You need to learn with your students, not against your students. You need to share your preparation because that will tap into their curiosity and hopefully create a deeper awareness. In the last few phrases, it's just saying, this can only happen if we actually put on our indigenous lens. To be honest with you, my number one fans out there, I highlighted what I found important and I organized it in a way that sounded kind of nice. There's not much else to it. I just believe what was in the poem are the main points of the article. Thank you again for your patience. Thank you for listening and interacting. I'm looking forward to my future responses and I really hope that some of my motivation will be back by then. But I don't know. In a way, these videos are kind of like a weekly vlog of what's going on with my life at university, but I'm still figuring things out. I'm not sure at the moment, but I'm still figuring things out. But I know eventually, maybe after the second month, maybe I'll get back into the groove of things and we'll start to hand in some assignments on time. I appreciate you for watching it until the end and I'll see you in class and around the music building. Take care, my friends. I'll see you later. And don't forget to get insurance on your camera. <laughs>What are you still doing here? Don't you have other videos to watch? Well, since you've stayed this long, I just wanted to let you know that it's not three in the morning. It's only 10.43 p.m. So that's good. And some updates. Um, I was using this old piece of hardware. I've actually never seen a, uh, what's this, an overhead uh, projector? Never heard of that before. Um, I had to clean up glass, and I hope that I got all of it. I'm going to now edit this video together so you can watch it, and I can get some marks for this class. Thank you so much. Goodbye.